Alright, so this next video is going to be on um, systems of equations. So it starts with graphing systems of equations, and I'm going all the way through um, graphing systems of inequalities. So it's a good few pages here, um, but I'll try to hold up every time so that we stay on the same page. So the systems of equations we have here are going to be two lines, okay? So these lines can either intersect at one point, they can be parallel and not ever intersect, or they can be the exact same line and just fall on top of one another. Okay, so what we are interested in in this unit is what the solutions to a system is, a system of two equations. So the solutions lie in where they cross if they do. So here we would have one solution, and it would be this xy coordinate where they cross. Here, it would be no solutions because they never cross at all. And here, it would be infinitely many solutions because they're the same line, so they're sitting on top of each other and going forever that way. Infinitely many solutions. So that's what this whole packet is pretty much about, is finding those solutions, because there's a lot of different ways to do it. So this first page here, it wants you to use the graph at the right to determine whether it's no solution, one solution, infinitely many. So you're just going to find those equations in the graph on the right and see whether the lines intersect or if they don't or if they're the same line. So um, that's the first page. So this second page here, page 404. You are given two different lines, two different equations of lines, and it wants you to graph the two lines. And once you do, you can determine whether it has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So you're just going to see which one of these pictures it looks like after you graph them. So you can graph lines in however, or many different ways. You can use your calculator, you can use a source online, you can just plug in different x values and see what you get for the y and plot those points. You guys know how to um, graph lines, so that should be easy enough. You know, just graph them and look to see where they intersect, if they do intersect at all, or if they're the same line. Okay. And then you're doing the same thing on page 406. So page 409, it says substitution at the top. This is where we get into some algebra, but we're still talking about the same concept here. It's just instead of graphing the two lines we have, we're going to use algebra to figure out where exactly they cross if they do. We're going to figure out which scenario it is without ever graphing them. So if you look at the bottom, so it says use substitution. And at the top it does explain if I miss some things. You can read this and um, that should help you as well. So it says use substitution to solve each system of equations. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. So let's just think about what it means to substitute something in. So if I gave you um, 2 equals 3, 2, y equals 3, x, okay? And then I told you x equals 3. And I said st substitute that x in to tell me what y is, okay? Well, you're going to plug this 3 in for that x. You're going to substitute it in. So you'll do 3 times 3, and you'll get 9. So you just substituted this in for a variable to solve for another one. That's pretty much what we're doing here, except it's a little bit more lengthy because we have two equations of lines. So let's just remember our end goal here. We want some xy coordinate. If it exists, if they cross, we want to find an xy coordinate. And I'll show you what it'll look like if they never cross or if they're the same line. So let's just look at, um, let's just look at number one. So it says y equals 4x. And then it says 3x minus 4y equals 1. Okay, so this is set up really well for us to use substitution. I can just take this y, y equals 4x, 
and substitute it in for this y, okay? And then I can solve for this x, and that's going to be my x-coordinate. Okay, so this would look like 3x minus 4 parentheses. Let's go see what our y was. 4x equals 1. Okay, and then you'll simplify, do that algebra, and you'll get a number for x. And that value is going to go in here for your x-coordinate. Once you get your x-coordinate, once you get one of the coordinates, it's easy from there on out. So say I don't know what my x is. Let's say my x was 2. All you have to do to get your y-coordinate, pick whichever equation you want, and plug, substitute one more time, plug that number back in. I would use the top one because it's shorter. Plug that number back in to solve for your y. And that'll be your y-coordinate. Okay. So not all of these are set up so nicely. You might have to um, manipulate your equations a little bit to get, get one of the equations where a variable is by itself so that you can plug all of that in for the variable. Okay. So yeah, actually a lot of them are like that. Like for number four, um, I don't have any var like an, a variable equals something. What I would do is for that top equation, the x minus 2y equals negative 1, I would just add that 2y over. So that now I have an x equals something, and I can plug that into the x in the other equation. And the examples at the top, I think, are really helpful if you read through those. So that's the substitution method. You're substituting, um, you're substituting something that equals this variable into the second equation to solve for the other variable. That wasn't a good way to explain it. But if you think back to our very first, like, simple example, you're just substituting in what it gives you here into the other one so that you can solve. Because eventually we just need an x value and a y value. So. What if they are parallel and they never intersect and there's no solution? So what does that look like? So number eight, I believe, is a no solution one. So we have x plus y equals 16 and 2y equals negative 2x plus 2. Okay, so my first step was I needed to solve for a variable. I don't have any variable by itself right now, so I can't really substitute anything in. So I took this first equation and I made it x equals 16 minus y. I just moved this y over, and now I have something I can substitute in for x. Make sure you use the second equation when you substitute. So I have 2y equals minus 2 parentheses. We plug all this stuff in for the x plus 2. Okay, then we can simplify. Distribute this negative 2. So I get negative 32 plus 2y plus 2. Okay, and then I have like 2y equals negative 30 plus 2y. I'm going to combine my like terms that I have for my variable, so I'm going to substitute my, or minus my 2y over. Okay, so I end up with 0 equals negative 30. Well, that's just not true. Zero does not equal negative 30. So if you get a false statement like that, no solution. And that's what happens on number eight. So if you're like, what the heck does this mean? That's a no solution. That's where my two lines are parallel. Okay. So you can also have infinitely many solutions. And I want to show you what that looks like. So for number 15 on this second page here, page 411. Number 15, I have x minus 5y equals 10, 2x minus 10y equals 20. Okay, so obviously you have to go ahead and solve for a variable here so that you can do the substitution. So I just chose the first one. So I, I moved, I moved my um, x over. That probably wasn't the most simple thing to do. I ended up with minus 5y equals 10 minus x, and then I divided by negative 5 everywhere. And I got that y equals minus. Actually, let's do it the easier way. So we don't
the easier way would be to take this and just add the 5 over 5y over x equals 10 plus 5y. Okay, so now let's try to substitute that back into the second equation. By 2, 10 plus 5y minus 10y equals 20. Okay, simplify. Now if you look here, 10y minus 10y, those variables are going to cancel out. 10y minus 10y is 0. Okay, so I end up with 20 equals 20. Okay, this is kind of like my last scenario, except it's a true statement. 20 equals 20. So we know this is infinitely many solutions. My variables canceled out, so I, I can't get that xy coordinate. So when you end up with something like this where some number equals itself, infinitely many solutions. And again, if you graph these, you can check and see those two lines are the exact same line. One has just been multiplied by two, if you notice that. So that's what infinitely many solutions will look like. If you get two numbers that don't equal each other and no variables left over, that's where it's no solution. If it doesn't make sense, it's no solution. So that's one way to solve systems algebraically. We have another way. Okay, there's more, more practice of substitution. There's another way called elimination. Some people prefer this way, some people prefer the substitution. So, I'm just going to set up number one and we can walk through it together how elimination works. x plus y equals negative 4. I'm on page 415. And then x minus y equals 2. So, you could use substitution and solve this. You could move like this y over and get x equals 2 plus y, plug that back in for x. But sometimes there's an easier way to do it. So if you notice here, so elimination means we want to eliminate one of the variables so that we're solving for just one at a time so that we can get that xy coordinate. Okay, so if you look at these equations, like how we... Um, I don't even know if you guys learn it like this anymore. But when you're like adding like 10 plus 20, and you set them on top of each other like this, and you add going down, and you get like 0, 3. So you can kind of do the same thing with equations like this. So you can either add or subtract them, whichever you think is going to eliminate one of the variables. So in this case, I'm going to subtract the 2. So if I subtract, I did that because I know this positive x minus another positive x, that's going to eliminate those two x's, okay? So, now I just have to do it with the rest, like how I would add normal numbers, add the rest going down. So I have 1, positive 1, minus a negative 1, so be careful with your negatives here. If you have to, like, write it out, so I have 1y minus minus 1y, which is really like 1y plus 1y. It's a little confusing when we go vertically because we're not used to that. So I end up with 2y equals negative 4 minus 2 minus 6. Okay. And then you can solve for the y here. 5 by 2, 5 by 2, so y equals negative 3. Okay, so I have my y coordinate now. Now all I have to do is plug that y back into whichever equation I want. Let's just plug it into the top one x plus my y at negative 3 equals negative 4. And I just solve for my x now, and that's the x coordinate of my xy coordinate. Okay? So elimination, you're either going to add or subtract based on doing whichever one of those cancels out one of my um, variables. Okay? And again, the examples at the top are helpful. Um, And it's not always going to be the case where you're adding them, even though that's more simple. Like in this case, I subtracted. But if you look, I could have also added, not to confuse you, but I could have. So it's on your own discretion here. I could have added them. So if I added, 
Instead of my x is being eliminated this time, my y's will be right. 1 plus minus 1. It's really like 1 minus 1. So my y's would have canceled had I added them. So you just have to look at the two equations you're given the system and see, hmm, if I added them, would anything cancel out? If so, go with that. If not, you might just subtract. As long as one of the um, variables is getting eliminated so that you're only left with one. Okay? And then you kind of go back to substitution where you substitute that value in to get the second part of your coordinate point. Okay, so there's a lot of practice with that going through here. So, on page 421, so it says elimination using multiplication. So this is kind of combining um, the elimination using addition or subtraction, what we just did, and putting multiplication in it as well, okay? These examples at the top kind of show that. So. Let's just look at number one again. 2x plus 3y equals 6. x plus 2y equals 5. Okay, so looking at this, how they are right now, I can't add these two equations and any of my variables cancel out. I can't subtract these two equations and any of the variables cancel out either. I can always use substitution. I could solve for this x and plug that back in. Sometimes it's more work. So these are just different methods because sometimes um, one method works more efficiently than another just based on the equations you have. So what they mean by multiplication is if I multiply this bottom equation by something, could I then add or subtract to have my variables cancel out? Can I manipulate this equation somehow where I can use elimination method? Okay. So if I multiply this bottom equation, just looking at this scenario here, this is what's speaking to me. If I multiply this second equation by 2, let's see what happens. So multiply by 2. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it down here. I then have 2x plus 4y equals 10. Make sure you multiply every single part of the equation. Okay, you see how I went from here to here. I just multiplied by 2. Okay, look. Now I have 2x plus 3y equals 6. My second equation is now this, 2x plus 4y equals 10. Now I can use elimination method because I can subtract 2x minus 2x. That will cancel my x's out. It will eliminate my x's. And then I can solve for my y and get my y coordinate. Okay, so that's what they mean by using multiplication. Changing one of the equations a little bit so that you can add or subtract and it actually eliminates a variable. Um, but again, you'll just be given like a bunch of systems and you just use whatever you're most comfortable with, unless you're specified to use a certain kind. So for all of these equations, you're going to have to change at least one of them a little bit so that the coefficient out front of one of the variables are the same so that you could subtract them or like opposite signs. So when you add them, they cancel. If you work through these, I promise it'll make more sense. You just have to kind of get the practice down. Just remember your end goal here is getting an x, y coordinate. And I recognize that in these questions, sometimes it's a's and b's and sometimes c, d, or m, n. You're just trying to get this, these two coordinate points. Doesn't really matter if it's called x, y. All right, so there's more practice on that. So on page 422, there's this nice little um, table that lays out all the different methods and the best time to use. I would recommend reading through that um, just to bring it all together for you. So you, you have all, like, the very first method is graphing. The very first thing we able to regraph them and just saw where they intersected. Um, and then you have substitution and then all the different kinds of elimination. So I thought that would be helpful. I mean, it gives you more practice with elimination using multiplication. Just read at the top here what it's prefacing page, and that'll tell you how it wants you to solve. And again, you can put these equations. I like to use a site called Wolfram Alpha. It sounds really funny, 
but if you just Google it, it'll, it's just like you can type in the equations um, and it'll pop up with the solutions in the graph. You just type in um, solve, type the word solve, type out your first equation, be really careful with parentheses, type out your first equation, then write the word and, and then type out your second equation. All right, so page 427. So graphing systems of inequalities. It's pretty much the same, but now we have these inequality symbols instead of an equal sign. But it's still going to be lines we're dealing with. It just changes um, how we interpret the solutions a little bit. So, looking at just this first equation system, I mean. So y is greater than negative 1, x is less than 0. Okay, so once you solve the inequalities by graphing. Okay, so I'm going to use two different graphs right now just to show you how this works. So let's say this will be the graph for y greater than negative 1, this graph for x less than 0. So to graph these, if you remember, I think this is review. I can just rewrite this as y equals minus 1 for now to get the actual line. And then I can return to what this sign is telling me. Okay, so I know to graph y equals minus 1, I'm going to go down to minus 1. And I'm going to have a line, a horizontal line, right? Okay, easy enough. So let's see what this inequality is telling me. So it says my y's are greater than negative 1. So that tells me I have to shade. So when you have inequalities and you're graphing them, there's always like a shading portion because it's telling you what y's are valid for that equation. So it says greater than minus 1, so I'm going to shade above. If it said y less than minus 1, I'm going to shade below. What that's telling me is that all of the points that I've shaded, like let's see, I would have picked a point like positive 4 is in my shaded area. Is positive 4 greater than negative 1? Yes. So it's pretty much just representing all of the values that work for that inequality, okay? So, another little rule with um, inequalities, if it's greater than or less than, it's a dotted line here. As opposed to if it holds greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, it'll be a solid line. Just a little thing there. Um, so since this is not or equal to, it'll be a dotted line. And I've shaded above because it's greater than. Okay, same thing with my x less than 0. So, we know if this was like x less than 1, you guys know how to graph x equals lines. i will go out on my 1 and it'd be a vertical line. This is kind of difficult to see because it's on the 0. So it's going to be like on the y-axis. Okay, so this is like y equals 0. Okay, that tells me all the x's less than zero. Okay, so I'm going to shade all the x's that are less than zero. So that means if I pick any point in this shaded area, let's say negative six. Is negative six less than zero? Yes, that's why we shade. Okay, so this is a system, so we have to put them on the same graph. So I'm going to erase my separate graphs. y less than 1, oops, alright, y less than 1, negative 1, so there's a negative 1, it's my line, we knew, or greater than negative 1, sorry, so let's shade it up this way, okay, oh, and it's a dotted line. this x less than 0. My line kind of looks like this. Okay, and then we shade it this way. So if you notice, I have this overlap of blue and red. Okay, and we have a dotted line too. See, I forget to do it as well, but as long as you know. So this shaded area is kind of like my solution. So 
this is an infinite amount of numbers, right? So we don't ever really do this um, algebraically, at least not in this packet. It's kind of just for you to see the shaded area. So you're going to plot the two lines, shade them, shade them like as you go. Like I did my first line and then I shaded and then I did my second line and shaded. I would shade lightly as you do both of them so that you can see where the overlap is and then shade darker where the overlap is. So this is like my solution to this system of inequalities, the overlap of shading, okay? So that's what you'll be doing for all of these. And you notice there are some greater than or equal to's. So those will be um, bold lines, no, dot, no dotted line. Those will be just normal looking lines. So be careful about the way that you shade up and down. And if it helps you to just rewrite it, like for number two, so it says y greater than negative two x plus two, and then y is less than or equal to x plus one. I would rewrite those while I'm graphing them as just y equals minus two x plus two and y equals x plus one, at least while I'm graphing them, so that I can see exactly okay those those are lines and you can I would get my table of values and just draw those lines as normal and then I would go back and see okay is it a dotted line or is it a solid line okay which way am I shading so it kind of helps to rewrite it that way and if it's not in the form y something you might have to move like an x over or like solve for y um that's another reason I'd rewrite it with equal signs okay so that's all you're doing for this um, graphing systems of inequalities. And there's a lot of practice on page 429. Um, so if you have any further questions, I wish I could do a bunch of examples with you guys, but this video is already super long. So just reach out individually if you'd like me to um, give you more, run through more examples with you, because I will be more than happy to. I just wanna make this a super long video, so I'm trying to go quickly. But um, again, the Stuff at the top where it explains it to you is really helpful as well. So I would read that in addition to watching this. All right. Have a good evening, you guys.